we'll go through this one. We'll go through, I'll try and make it relatively quick and less painful than that one. We'll see how it goes. This is the list that SOP the engineer gave me, Sean, that, that everything in his list is here. I've just written it short, so I don't have to spend an hour writing it up. Um, we'll have a quick look at that. So it's reasonably big, but there's nothing that's crazy in there. Um, I'll give you a quick look at what I've written down there. And then we'll go through them. Okay, I'll, I'll just do it this way. Chassis number. The chassis number has been... I've done a lot of painting in the cast, moving over, resprays the chassis numbers here. It's not visible just because of the amount of paint over it, so I've got to clean that up. Wastegate's plumbed back. That's going to be a fun one. And not something I'm going to be doing, that's for sure. So currently my wastegates... Sneak down, sneak under there. I'll have a quick look under the car. That's my wastegates. So that job, that's a job for Andy at AdmoFab, or whoever he gives it to at <laughs> Adelaide Motorsport Fabrication, they're doing that. And the other big job that I'll get back to in a second. PCV, um, positive crankcase ventilation. I currently have the uh, rocket covers, the valve covers, going straight to a breather tank, as do most guys with cars like this, and a breather right there. I've not allowed that. The only emission rule with this car being a 1973 car is it has to have a PCV, so everything that comes out of those rocket covers has got to go back into the engine. Um, I do have a really nice pair of Motion Raceworks um, bullet catch cans, this is slightly smaller than that one, I've got two of them, two round ones. They will be mounted somewhere around the front, um, and so I have the valve covers going to the catch cans and then into uh, just in front of, between the turbo and the air filter, so straight back into the engine. It's not something I really want to do. Um, oily fumes going through the turbos and messes up the turbos a bit but it's the rules don't know sheet that's going to be an interesting one the dyno sheet for this thing um, when because of one of the other things on the list I'll get to in a second that's coming out that's going to reduce the power considerably that's how it'll be and then it'll go on the dyno after that. So for this car, it'll be a disappointing power figure. But I don't really... Oh, this hurts to say, but I don't need 1,400 horsepower at the hubs on the street. Yeah. Firewall holes. So everywhere I've got something coming through, there should be a grommet. Um, remove intercooler. That's the big one. This one, it's a bit of a kick in the dick, um, kind of. So for this car to make as much power as it does, that guy there. So that's my water to air intercooler. I've got water coming in through a box in the back where I put ice water. And the hoses that come through, the pipes that come through, this one's in from the, um, this one comes in from the turbos into the intercooler, nice and cold. Then this one here, the cold side goes straight up under the dash and into the throttle body. That guy there, so up through here. With turbo cars and coolings obviously key for making power. If you can get a near to water into cool in your car, you're gonna make more power. Um, 
that thing works fantastic. It's one of the best mods I've made to the car. It's the best mod I've made power-wise, apart from actually fitting the turbos. Um, and it needs that to make as much power as it does. Again, I don't need that much power on the street. <sighs> but um, it's got to come out. It's a pressure vessel. So there's essentially compressed air inside the car. Um, engineer's not a fan of that. For obviously obvious reasons. It's a, it's a hazard. If something goes wrong, it might only be... 30 something psi in there but but if a, a clamp comes loose or something like that it becomes a projectile if something's laying over the pipes and the pipe bursts or something it's a projectile and it's air in your face that sort of thing i'm not allowed it that's all it comes down to the only way i can have that in the car is by completely sealing it um, and i don't want it looking like a uh, the engine cover out of a early speedboat or something like that, a big box in the back of the car, plus another whole console on top of those pipes. Now the... I've had an air-to-air -air in the front of this car before. I've had about three different air-to-airs in the front of this car before. With the way this grill slopes in. There's not a huge amount of room in this car. I do have, please excuse the mess again, but up here, that grill up there, that's with the honeycomb cut out, so I could have a monster four inch thick intercooler in there. I don't really want to cut it up again to fit another intercooler in there. The car should make plenty of power without an intercooler, it's not going to make 1400 horsepower. They may make a thousand, I don't know. We'll just have to see. I don't think it will make a thousand. That's just numbers. I don't, I don't really care anymore. Um, so the current plan. So I'll leave these turbos where they are. But I'm simply going to disconnect these hoses through here. I'll probably leave those pipes fitted inside the, in the car. They don't need to be removed. And I'll simply rotate the housing around so this outlet's now down here. This one's up here. I do have another throttle body elbow coming. It's being cast for me. Um, and it'll be a forward facing one. So that'll just be two pipes coming straight from the turbos straight up into the throttle body. And no one's cool. I'm hoping with um, E85 and a bit of tuning, it'll still do, it'll still do well power-wise. But with the lack of racing at the moment, uh, me not being able to go where the racing is because most of it's in Victoria at the moment, and I work in WA. I can't really risk going into state, and if something goes wrong with this current thing that's going on in the world. If I have to isolate somewhere or quarantine somewhere, I I don't have the time to do that with work. So I can't risk going anywhere. So I'm not sure when that's going to change. Um, so power-wise, as long as I can cruise the car, I don't really care how much power it makes. I'm at that stage now. I'm just, I've achieved most of what I want to achieve with the car. So I just want to um, enjoy it now but still have a reasonable amount of power. Um, just briefly on the racing situation, I'm a bit of a sad panda at the moment. Yeah, I said sad panda. Um, drag challenge. Entries opened for that on Friday, just gone. Sold out in six hours, which is just crazy. Um, I'd say that's because it's been talked, but the last year was missed out due to the crisis going on the crisis um and everyone's had an extra year to have their cars ready not me but everyone else said it so everyone's jumped on board um i've done four in a row now so this was going to be my fifth but thanks to that 
um, I can't play. I'm not allowed to go out and play with my friends. So I'm not sure when the next time I'm going to get to race this is. So I might as well concentrate on getting it sorted for the street. So back to the lift. Go through real quickly now. Um, and score gone. Boo. Wash the scooters. That's a given general roadworthy. So on handbrake cable. Uh, the Momo steering wheel I've got is fine, but it's got holes drilled in it for my buttons, so I have to change that. Might get a GT steering wheel put back in it. I've got to have a indicator on the shifter. I have a race shifter. There's no nothing to show. There's no light or little pointer to show what it's actually in. Trains brake button. I have a trans brake. The trans brake can stay in the transmission. The button cannot, so I can't use that on the street. Here. Yeah. Uh, demister. I don't have a heater or demister in the car at the moment. The demister would actually be a really welcome addition for when I do road trip it. Um, there'll just be a little 12 volt hot rod one. Sun visors, I take those out when the roll cage goes in, so I can put those back in. Uh, headrests. Now, the rules with half cages the front of the headrest has to be 150 mil away from the nearest bar, not including the padding, so the actual bar itself. So the steel to the headrest. So I've got to put something between the seat and the roll cage to keep that distance. That's not a problem. Uh, vent the fuel tank externally, external fuel points. Um, the anti-roll bar in the rear, the racing anti-roll bar, that's got to, instead of taking the whole bar out, um, just the links and block the holes block all the holes in the floor and the boot floor ground clearance isn't a problem I haven't run a front sway bar for a couple of years that's got to go back in that's easy now my bump stops tubular support to front bump stops under here that's the factory bump stop that's the factory plate that's been significantly altered to suit to fit around my uh, dump pipe from the turbo so what I'll be doing there is making something that comes down to a fairly strong point and bracing that up because there's room for that to flex um, at the moment it doesn't do much at all it's just there so if someone looks under there they can say yeah it's got a bump stop Strengthen the bumper brackets. Um, you can't really see them at the moment, but I've trimmed a lot out of the front bumper brackets to fit the intercooler pipes in. But I can add more easily. That's not a problem. Torque converter. It's a um, SFI bell housing. Let's see if we can see under there. Somewhere under there. That's never had a cover on it so I've got to fabricate one there isn't enough the shelf one there so the four link brackets welded and the fab four link bars I'll go over these quite quickly it's um, a little bit involved this one so the back end of this car it's got a um, McDonald Brothers Bolton four link kit it's not designed for a car that does um, what this car does I'll leave that for the next video on the car um, it's fairly involved and it'll make more sense when I pull stuff out of the car and we get into what's going on there. Um, but basically that kit was originally designed for fast cruisers with a fair bit of horsepower but not sort of 1.3 second 60 foot in a 4,000 pound car and a whole bunch of horsepower. So um, I won't get too in depth in that for now, um, we'll leave that for another one. Diff 2 exhaust clearance when jacked at the moment. Diff sits on my tailpipes, not allowed to do that. 5.8 rear studs, I currently have the factory half inch size studs, they're long studs, they're stronger than regular studs. Um, but for the horsepower, I do need to go up to 5.8. And lastly, tailpipes past the body. So my tailpipes exit right at the back end, um, slightly under that rear apron. They just need to be extended slightly. 
so that's pretty much it for the list. Um, it's not terrible. Lots of roadworthy type stuff, really. But um, for the kind of car we're playing with, the modifications it's got, it's all um, pretty much roadworthy stuff. The next video I do on this, I'm, I'll be going through the rear end. And um, we'll do that. And uh, I think that pretty much covers it. So as I go through that list, um, I'll do videos. I'll try and cover a few things in each video so it's not too boring like this one has been with all my talking. Sorry. Yeah, too much of this talking. Um, and hopefully we can smash this thing out reasonably quickly. While messing with that thing. Um, over the other side of the coop there under that pink blanket and a bunch of other stuff there's a new set of wheels for that truck they arrived from the states the other week before i show you those i'm gonna i think i'll paint them first i don't know and i've also got um hiding under the hat here some ride tech shock waves for the front of that thing and suspension bits being painted and that sort of thing I'm going to concentrate on this list, getting this thing where it should be. Thanks again to everyone that's uh, come along for the ride, everyone that started watching, everyone that's subscribed. Um, the numbers are going up, which is cool. I'm not focusing on that, I'm just trying to focus on doing a half decent job. Um, hope I'm getting there. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.